Listen, I want to tell you something about gathering in this house. This house called Turning Point. Tell your neighbor, there is a turning point. I'm just going to experience a turning point uh, today. And as soon as we stepped in this boundary, as soon as we stepped on the land, as soon as we breathed the, the air realm, the supernatural occurred, and we moved into a, a prophetic unction or a prophetic nature that is what this apostolic center is all about. We are about unlocking identity. We are about authority. We are about anointing. We are about healing. We are about talents. We are about the dreams of individuals, people groups, our, our state, our region, our nation, the nations of the earth. And when all of that unlocking happens, what emerges is the mature sons of God. And the earth, Romans says, is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm maturing. And so, you know, I've been preaching from the latter all year. Say 2020. So I'm going to, and at the top of the ladder, we honor the Word of God in this house. So at the top of this ladder is this Bible that you can see that I've used for many, many years. Uh, this, this particular Bible has been around the world for real. And so I was reading in 1 Corinthians 2, and it says, And my speech... And my preaching was not without enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. Say demonstration. Demonstration of the Spirit and power. So that's what I want to activate today. I don't want to activate somebody enticing words of man's wisdom. I want to activate the demonstration of the Spirit and power. So if you want that, lift your hands. I activate that on the inside of us according to the Word of God. Why? Why did Paul say that to this church in uh, Corinth? He said that, that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it? We speak wisdom among them, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But here's what he said. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. And that's what we're finding in this house, the mysteries of the Word of God, the mysteries of the wisdom of God. And here's what Paul says. And they've been ordained from before the foundations of the earth. I'm telling you, God is not looking at the interesting things that's going on in the earth and trying to figure out what to do. He, this Word says He ordained His wisdom to be released by demonstration of the Spirit and power. He ordained that before the foundations of the earth. All right, which none of these princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Okay, here's what I came to say. But it is written, and it was written before, say before, it was written before, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. There are things that God has prepared for us that is beyond what we've seen, beyond what we've heard. He's got them prepared for us and we love God. Shout, I love God. I love God. I has not seen, ear has not heard, but here's what he says. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 
Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. So I'm going to activate something. Get up uh, on your feet and lift your hands and say this after me. My expectation today is that I would see in the realm of the Spirit. My eyes would be open to see new vision. My ears would hear the mystic mysteries of God. Amen. You can be seated. Have you seen Kingdom Comeback? It's all over. If you turn on your TV at all, you are seeing this because of the Kansas City Chiefs that won the Super Bowl. And there is a, there was a prophetic word that was connected to it. We talked about it uh, last week. I've sent out emails uh, about it. But there was a man, Bob Jones, which, by the way, was the first man uh, back in the mid-90s that prophesied over uh, Deanne and I. But this man, uh, Bob Jones, 37 years ago, said that when the Kansas City Chiefs go to the Super Bowl and win, then you will know that revival will begin and God will raise up apostolic chiefs Kansas City Chiefs, to be in all of the mountains of uh, influence. And so I knew that our friend, uh, James Nesbitt, and if, if you've been on the internet, you've seen his image here, if you can see it, apostolic chiefs. And he's got the prophetic word down here. When the chiefs win the Super Bowl, you will know that revival is about to come. God is raising up his apostolic chiefs. And then he's got the date, uh, 2 to 2020. And so I called James on Tuesday and I said, hey, I need, I need your I need this image that you have created. And he said, well, sure. When do you need it? And I said, I need it by Friday. And I got it by Friday. So we're going to have this on, uh, you know, up, up here. And here's what James sent with this. When I opened it up, here's what he said. As you look upon this art, ask for these images to have a voice. This image right here of the Lion of the tribe of Judah wearing the apostolic chiefs ahead of this revival and all of these mountains of influence, he said, ask for these images to have a voice so that people will receive revelation, will receive light and prophetic insight into the purposes of the king and his kingdom. Then here's what he says, and I love this. It's so quantum. Together we will create a swirl of intercession throughout the earth. As these prophetic images become portals through which eternal light, truth, and glory are released. So we're just going to believe that as we display this at the Turning Point Apostolic Center here in the middle of the United States of America, that it's going to become a portal that we are going to carry revival and see these spheres of influence have men and women of God that are ruling and reigning and having dominion in all of these areas of culture. Can you say amen? amen. So, last week, we talked about all of this, but the game hadn't been played yet. And that didn't start until 5.30, 
Sunday afternoon. And so obviously the Chiefs won the Super Bowl and they called it uh, Kingdom Comeback for an obvious reason. If you're not into football and you didn't watch the game, I'm just going to tell you about it right now. But last week was an amazing week. Let me just give you the rundown. So, Sunday night, we win the game. Tuesday, we have the State of the Union address. Did anybody listen to it? Let me tell you about that State of the Union address. It was filled with prophetic declarations. Right there, God is building a mountain with an apostolic chief <laughs> at the top of it. Then, that was Tuesday. So we have Sunday. Then we have Tuesday. Then we have Wednesday. President Trump is still President Trump. <laughs> then we have Thursday. And we have what's called... And, and you might not have known about it really, but it's called the National Day of Prayer. And it's, I think, 140 nations uh, uh, attended and, and many people from all over uh, America. And so they had the National Prayer Breakfast, and that was Thursday. I tell you, what a lineup. It was like a, a divine uh, setup. And let me tell you something wonderful and so real about God. God throughout the Bible, let's see, he used trees, he used rocks, he used storms, he used wine, he used mountains to tell us one thing, to keep our faith free, to have our prayer make us strong so if God can use a tree, if God can use a rock, if God can use a mountain, if he can use a storm, if he can use a flood, he can flat use a ball game. He can use the State of a Union address. He can use an impeachment <laughs> to announce revival. And all of that happened in like five days. Five days could shift everything. So we have Sunday. Bob Jones prophesied 37 years ago. How many have, been, have you been believing God for something to happen for 37 years? Well, some of you aren't 37, but you know what I'm saying. A long time. And he prophesied that, that when the chiefs win the Super Bowl, that revival would begin and God would raise up his chiefs to be apostolic leaders in many spheres. Then Tuesday you have the State of the Union address. And if you are on our um, email blast of which this went out all over uh, Kansas, the, what, I, what I did and what I love to do is I got the transcript of that speech. And so I just went through it and I got all the prophetic statements out of it. And here, I'm just going to read uh, a few of them for those of you who aren't on the, on the email blast or those that are watching through Facebook Live. Here's how, it's, here's how it started. We launched the great American comeback. Right there, right there. A kingdom come back. That's what, they, that's what Sports Illustrated called this whole thing. It was a comeback. So, say comeback. Come yeah. And so, so President Trump says, in America, we do not punish prayer. Oh, I tell you, I'd love to. We do not tear down crosses. We do not ban symbols of faith. We do not muzzle preachers and pastors in America. We celebrate faith. We lift our voice in prayer and we raise our sights to the glory of God. What is all that? This is our glorious and magnificent 
inheritance. Americans are pioneers, pathfinders. They settled the new world. They built the modern world. We changed history forever by em here's how we did it by embrace, uh, embracing the eternal truth that everyone is made equal by the hand of almighty God everybody I tell you there was so much prophetic statements and declarations that was going on in that place it was just amazing so listen to this on this land on this soil on this continent, the most incredible dreams come true. Tell your neighbor, dream on. Dream on. Dreams are coming true. This nation is our canvas. This country is our masterpiece. We look at tomorrow. We see, listen to this, unlimited frontiers just waiting to be explored. Our brightest discoveries are not even yet. Not, I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, and hadn't, hadn't even entered our minds, the great things that God has for us. Our spirit is still young. The sun is still shining. God's grace is shining. God bless America. Then we had Wednesday. Then, I'll just skip over that. Then we had Thursday, the National Prayer Breakfast. Here's one thing that was said. Faith, and, and, and you know, if we talk about anything around here, it's faith. Faith keeps us free. Prayer makes us strong. God alone is the author of life and the giver of grace. So we had Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Shout today. So today, here we are, Sunday. So there's the headlines about the Super Bowl. Say, kingdom come back. Yeah. So here's the deal. So they went into the fourth quarter. Down. 20 to 10. Ah. But we're staying in there. Deanne and I are texting each other. Different emojis but we're believing we're, we're there's gonna there's a revival on the face of the earth and we're going to be at the forefront of that ah, that's what we're that's what we're saying we're believing the man of God and so we went into the fourth quarter and we're down we're down 20 to 10 then I'm not kidding like in the eight minutes left they scored 21 unanswered points and won the thing 31 to 20. Shout kingdom come back. Yeah. It was said about them that it was a historic double digit win. Say come back, come back, come back. Tell your neighbor Sandy's going to preach on come back. Yeah, I am. I'm going to preach on come back. Here's the deal about come back. No matter how badly you are behind. You can come back. <laughs> no matter how badly you're losing, you can come back. And check it out. No matter how much time you have left, say it, you can come back. In eight minutes. I love this stuff. Eight minutes minutes. So let's just do a little bit of review. And the reason that I want to do review is um, I used to teach school and I loved, to, I loved the review. I loved the review when I was in school because I knew what I needed to know. I mean, there was all of this vast array of knowledge, and then, but when we had review, I knew what was important to remember. So we're going to review this. So we, so this is 2020, say 2020. 2020. And we've talked about it, the Hebrew year being 5780, but when we came over into our Gregorian calendar of 2020, I just kind of wondered about 
what 20 meant because I knew that all the Hebrew letters have numerical value. And so Kaf, K-A-F, has the numerical value of 20, but shout, we've got two of them. 20, 20. So here's the mystery of uh, Kaf. And, and really, the Hebrew lang language is a rather mystic uh, language. And so the mystery of Kaf is that it's made up of two Hebrew words, one means potential, and one means actual. And here's what it suggests. It suggests that cough or 20 enables the latent power of potential to be made actual in the physical. We've all, we've all looked at somebody and said, oh gosh, they've got potential. They've got potential. They didn't actualize yet, but they've got potential. I hope they live up to their potential. But when in cough, 20, the latent power of potential is made actual in the physical. So that means, that's why we have to see what we cannot see, hear what we cannot say, so that we can reach into that unseen realm and pull that potential out of that unseen realm and see it actualized or come to manifestation in this actual realm. So in 20 20 is when we believe that potential comes out of that dimension and it manifests in this dimension or it's tangible in this dimension. So I, I've not talked about this, but Kaf, K-A-F, in the Hebrew language, they, they have a numerical value and also they have like a a picture, and the picture that is associated with this Hebrew letter is the palm of the hand. Just lift your hand. But we've got two. So we got 20, 20. So when we lay both our hands, and this is very in the scripture, when you lay both of your hands on someone or even ourselves, 2020, here's what we do. We envision God laying his hands on us, calling forth the latent power of the Spirit within, because it is within, to be manifest in the physical realm. So I love that. I love envision it. I love lifting my hands and laying hands on myself and envisioning that it's God. It's God's hand. That's cough anyway. It's God's hands laying on us to release the power of God. And then today is the ninth. Tell your neighbor she's going to tell us what nine means. Yes, I am. I'm going to tell you what nine means. I've been talking about this every Sunday that we've come in here. We came in July the 5th, or July, January the 5th, and January the 12th, and January the 19th, and January the 26th, and then we came in February the 2nd, and now, and I had, I've looked up all of the meanings of those numbers, and so we're at nine. Say nine. nine. The energy and the frequency, because everything is energy, because the wonderful science Einstein says everything is energy, everything has a frequency, everything has a vibration, so the energy or the frequency of nine is wisdom, Fullness and influence. Let's activate this. When I walk out of here, I'm walking out with wisdom, fullness, and influence. And check it out. Nine is in the Bible 49 times. Seven times seven is 49. Seven is a symbol of completeness in God. I just believe today if we would release our faith, and we say we are going to release our faith, that God 
9 means God has completed his creation and all of his promises and they are prepared for us before the foundations of the earth. Now let me just revert, uh, 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 review this because last week when we started revival, let's just say it like that, it was on 2 2 20, 20. So we had like a bunch of twos. Two means keep the faith. It means keep the faith. Keep means to persist or to persevere or to press ahead. Sort of like keep going. Just keep going. Keep the faith. Keep going. But in Hebrew, it means to watch. Or to shepherd. And so we talked about it last week. That in the ancient. Well really not really the ancient days. But a shepherd. Who was uh, shepherding sheep. Uh, during the day. What he would do. Is he would go out. And he would collect thorn bushes. And then he would place all of those thorn bushes. When it came time for them to gather together for the evening, he would put those thorn bushes around uh, the sheep to protect them and to keep them safe from predators. So your part in keep the faith is that you persist and you uh, uh, persevere and you Press ahead. And because many of you live out of town, it's sort of like you have to persevere to drive to Ark City. And my part is that I would surround you with word thorn bushes. I want you to be protected by the word of the Lord. So we can even create like a mobile Corral. So that wherever you go, you're not just protected here. But wherever you go, you're protected from all. Have you noticed that stuff happens to steal your faith all the time? You know what I'm saying? Just that little nitpicking almost. And all of a sudden you can, you can be exhausted. You can think, okay, like where is my faith? I'm telling you. That is stopping. You're going to walk out of here and those faith thieves are not going to be able to pick you off anymore. Shout, keep the faith. She, yeah, keep the faith. So, say, come back. So, I always go to the Word. You know, I'm a Word bird. I always like to find a portion of Scripture that lines up with what God is uh, doing so I, I'm telling you I can connect it with this Super Bowl I can connect it with the word of God I can connect it with the Hebrew calendar and so we're and we're going to connect it to come back so I'm going to go to second Kings you don't have to go there because it'll be um, the amplified version Sandy's amplified uh, version of the uh, Bible, let me just tell the story of this great Shabbat, and that's the uh, Hebrew month that we're in right now, Shabbat, and uh, so it's an example of a Shabbat comeback, a pattern, a uh, plan that brings blessings in a most unique way. So this is a uh, historic uh, account found in Scripture. It's a great example of this comeback because during this month, we shout, my blessings are on the way. And it's not like they're on, they're coming. It's like they're on your way. If you just walk it out, there they are. That's what I'm saying. And it's also like you're encircled with these blessings. Say this. My blessings are on my way. My are on my way. 
But have we noticed, because I do just like to keep it real, sometimes, yes, the ble my blessings uh, are on the way, but sometimes there's things, say things. Sometimes there's things in the way. Do I have a witness in this room? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes there's it. Let's, let's just check this out. Let me tell you what this Shabbat comeback does. And this is exactly what happened in this football game. A kingdom comeback moves things. It breaks traditions. It creates unity. I'm telling you, all of that happened in the fourth quarter. Tell your neighbor, it's not too late. I tell you, things were a mess until the fourth quarter, and then something, the comeback started. And it might be in the fourth quarter. It creates, and then all of a sudden there was a, 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 a strategy. So this, this comeback that I'm going to talk about is talking about an injustice. It's talking about a corporate purpose. This is why we gather. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together because there's just some stuff that's going to get legislated because we come together. There are, there are obviously things that we can do by ourselves, and then there's some things, and we're going to talk about it uh, in the next few weeks, that just will not be done unless we come together in a setting like this and begin to legislate. So we're going to where today, through this portion of Scripture, you're going to see them fighting injustice. You're going to see them running after a corporate purpose. They're going to be open to the new, and they're going to confront a bleak future. I tell you, outside of God and outside of faith, when you listen to the news, it's pretty bleak. You know what I'm saying. We're going to confront that with the Word of God, and then we're just going to obey without question. So in this particular Hebrew month, there are some distinguishing features of comeback standards. When you've done all you know to do, stand. So we're going to have a comeback standard. Here's, what, here's a distinguishing um, characteristic. Of the comeback. Usually the assignment is impossible. <laughs> it really is. When we got down to eight minutes. And we're behind. You just go. Okay is there enough time? Is there enough time to, to pull this off? Their assignment is impossible. They obey without question. I saw a little clip. I don't know whether you saw it Dawn. But I saw where uh, the quarterback of the Chiefs goes over. Now, he's already thrown two interceptions. He just hadn't done well. Uh, you know, he's, he's doing great all year, and it comes down to the final game. And I, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm wrestling with revival. Oh, my gosh, and the Word of God. And this guy is throwing these two interceptions, and he just, the, nothing is happening, and we're behind. And we have eight minutes left, and he goes over and... And the coach, say coach. And the coach says, I don't care. Just keep throwing the ball. Keep throwing the ball. Keep throwing the ball. Keep, thro keep on believing. Keep on walking. Keep on staying happy. Keep on filling up with joy. Keep on connecting with people that believe the way that you believe. He said, keep on throwing the ball. So he obeys without question. They moved in a, it wasn't all about one player. Listen, they moved with corporate purpose. And that's what we're going to see in this story. And they, and listen, they don't bail when difficulty comes. I love that. They attract, I'm talking about comeback standers. I'm talking about people that are in this comeback kingdom up here. They attract favor. And here's what I love about a comeback person. They always win. 
They always win. That's, what I, that's, that's where my faith is. They always win. So in this, um, let me go, let me shift from the Super Bowl to 2 Kings. And the context of this story, uh, the catalyst for it was there was a withholding of increase, a withholding of finances, a withholding of taxes from a king, the king of Moab, Israel's king had died, and so they just thought, well, okay, we're not going to pay, we're not going to pay taxes anymore. So there was a withholding of what was rightfully Israel's. And so here's what uh, uh, King Ahab decided to do. He said, you know what, we, we need to come back right here. We need to come back. And so he, the king of Israel, asked the king of Judah, which is Jehoshaphat, he said, will you go to war with me for this increase? Listen, we need to have people that will join us in what we're believing God for. And this is what I noticed in this portion of Scripture. And every time I read it, uh, I, I make note of this. When the king of Israel asked the king of Judah, would you go to war uh, with me to get what's rightfully, it wasn't an unrighteous request, what's rightfully ours as a nation, it doesn't say that Jehoshaphat even prayed about it. He just said, yes. And so then the king of Israel asked Jehoshaphat, well, you know, which way do you think we should go? And isn't that interesting? You would think that the king of Israel would be like telling the king of Jehoshaphat what was going on, but he doesn't. So the king of Israel asked the king of Judah for help. And Judah, it was a warring tribe, also means uh, praise and worshiper. And let me just say this about Judah, let me say this about a worshiper. Worshippers like to be in the secret place because your secret's released in the secret place. I love that. So here's the principle, and we're going to activate this. Where you are determines what you hear. Where you are, I'm talking about the secret place. Where you are determines what you're here. So if you're at a football game, you hear the fans, you hear the cheerleaders. If you're at a 10-year-old birthday party, that's all you hear. A bunch of kids running around. If you're at a zoo, then you hear the animals. But if you're in the secret place... Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit reveals secrets. That's what's at. This is the perspective. I, I hadn't seen and ear hadn't heard. Neither has entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for you. But they are being revealed by the Spirit. And that's in the secret place. And so we're going to find out here that Jehoshaphat is coming out of that secret place because he is a worshiper. And in that secret place, your uh, assignment can be shifted. It can be changed. You can become aware of the weaknesses of the enemy. Paul said you need to be aware of the wiles of the devil. He reveals our strengths. Sometimes we, we don't know how strong we are until we have to face something. And then sometimes we just surprise ourselves. And then he reveals where your gifts are needed. So Jehoshaphat connected with God obviously that morning and later in the day he's asked to join a battle. So the king of Israel said, you know, which way should we go to get down here to Moab? And he said, well, we need to go right through here. We need to go through the desert. Well, you know, there wasn't any water. There wasn't any roads. There wasn't any maps. It was dangerous. There wasn't any food. It was a dry uh, desert, but here's what happened, and this is what I love. Sometimes, sometimes following God, Nancy, it like doesn't make like natural sense. 
do I do I, do I do I just keep on believing or what what am I what am I doing? But here's what happened to these two kings. They they are going through Edom, they are going through that desert, and the Bible says that they, that they came, it was an it was a area called Edom, and the king of Edom, he decides that he's going to join them in the, in the battle. So, sometimes you can pick up authority in the desert place of your life. Shout amen. I, I, know, I know what I'm talking about there. You're in that desert place, but that is right where you can pick up authority. So two kings went in and three kings came out. So then, check it out. They traveled seven days out there in this desert. There isn't any water. There isn't any food. They got all the cattle with them. They got all this stuff. They're just about to die. And then of all things, the king of Israel gets all over Jehoshaphat, who he trusted in the beginning, and now he's not so sure. Have you, have you ever had somebody, they, they ask for your counsel, and oh, it's just great, and then it doesn't turn out so good, and all of a sudden, you're the bad guy. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Jehoshaphat is the bad guy. Why did you have us go this way? And so, the king of Israel says, is there not a prophet? And one of his servants just happens to know Elijah is somewhere close who is a prophet. And Jehoshaphat knows that the word of the Lord is with him. He does. So, he describes... And in this description, he describes Elijah as a water carrier that poured water over Elijah's hands, which I love that because that is what Shabbat, that's why we've got this water fountain going on up here so that your eyes will see what this month is all about. It is about carrying water to someone, or, care, or you come to this place to be watered, which, by the way, is what our um, first fruits gifts was, a little bucket, so that you can get your bucket full when you come here, and then you can take that bucket and water something else. But it describes Elijah, this prophet, that they are saying carries the word of the Lord that... He poured water over the prophet that he uh, served for several years. And um, they're about to die of thirst. They're, about, they're either going to be killed by the enemies or they're going to be killed by the wilderness. And this is the perfect time. They need to come back. They need to come back. 2020, let me just say this. 2020 is a year for a prophetic comeback. It is. I'm believing it. Joseph had been true to his calling in the secret place, and he heard a secret, and here's what he heard. The prophet will know what to do. So here they go. The three kings go. They find out where Elisha is. I tell you, some of these stories in the Bible are like, how did they work that out? So here's these three kings go, and they, they go, to, go down there. And I love this. Elijah wasn't even very nice to them. He wasn't even very nice. And he kind of taunts them, and he said, well, hey, why don't you go to your other prophets? And why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? And uh, so finally he says, well, I wouldn't even listen to you except for Jehoshaphat. I wouldn't even listen to you except for somebody who stays in the secret place. And he said, oh, by the way, bring me a minstrel. Now, here they are out in the middle of a desert. There's three kings here. They're going to go to war. They come to this prophet, uh, interesting prophet, Elijah, and and then Eli and they think that they're going to get the, the plan or what to do. This prophet will know what to do. We're in a mess. And he says, bring me a minstrel. Bring me somebody who will 
lead in praise and worship. And so I'm telling you, once again, there's just some stuff that we're not going to get by ourselves. There may be that worshiper who's sitting next to you. And the Bible says that when that worshiper played, he was a minstrel, so he had some kind of uh, instrument that he played. The Bible says that the hand of the Lord came on Elisha. 2020, the hand of the Lord is coming on us. And so he played. And so I just want to say this. If we'll worship God even today, mm -hmm. We'll get something. Yes, we will. Because even if it's somebody else's worship, Elijah got the strategy. I love this. And it was profound. So here's what he said. And we've talked about this many times. And if you've been saved for 15 minutes, you've been you know about this story of digging ditches. Elijah, of all things. I mean, it's like this guy, Bob Jones. What in the world does the Kansas City Chiefs going to a Super Bowl and winning the thing have to do with revival and apostolic chiefs getting on all the mountains of influence. What is the connection there? And that's what you think when you read this comeback story. Elijah said, now what I want you to do is go out and dig this entire valley full of ditches. Shout, just shout, come back. And then he goes on to say, now, they're in a desert. You're not going to see rain. It's not going to rain. There's not going to be a storm. There's not going to be any of that. And this valley of ditches is going to be filled with water. It's no different than this. So we've got the ancient story tethered to something that we're in. This very second. It doesn't in our natural mind. That's why I hadn't seen and ear hadn't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man. And I cannot figure this thing out in my natural mind. So shout let it go. All right, we're just going to have to let it go. So a valley of ditches. So here's what they do. They dig ditches all night. They just dig them all night. And then I love it. And it says, and it came to pass in the morning. In the morning. And it came to pass. Listen, I was sick when I came to church, but in the morning. I couldn't pay my bills tonight, but in the morning. I'm losing my mind tonight, but in the morning. My family is broke down tonight, but in the morning. That's digging ditches. Shout in the morning. In the morning. And the night before the in the morning, what are they doing? They're doing the word of the Lord. They are digging ditches and they dug them all night. Listen, let me tell you something. Let's make it real. When we lift our hands and we don't really feel like it, we're digging ditches. When we drive over here to this little sanctuary, we are digging ditches. When we pay our tithes, we are digging ditches. When we study the Word, when we pray, when we worship all by ourselves, we are digging ditches. And let me tell you what the enemy, the Moabites, they get up the next morning, and it's the same in the morning. You got to get this. The enemy gets up on the same morning that's in the morning for Israel and Judah and Edom. And they look down on this valley that they're in. And the sun, I love this, the sun is shining on this Water, how did the water get there? These ditches are full of water. 
Now they had the same thought. It can't be water in these ditches because it didn't rain and it didn't storm. So here's what they said. They said these guys must have got mad at each other in the night and they killed off each other and they filled these ditches and it's, it's filled with blood. Say this, the devil is stupid. Now, let, let me tell you something. The, the Bible says that we would tread on all the power of the enemy. So I'm not saying that he's not power. I, I'm not saying all that. But in this particular instance, I mean, these are like men in, in this army. And they look down on, the, on this river of blood and determine that these guys have fought each other, and now the blood is running in all of these ditches, and they've killed off each other, and they know it's not water or rain because it didn't storm in the night. And so here's what they do. They just like look at each other and go, hey, it's not a problem. Let's just go down in there and, and the camp, and they're already defeated. They've already killed each other uh, off shall come back. Now, and listen, I'll, I'll say this again. I don't want you to believe that the devil is not a formidable foe, but in this historic account of triumph and comeback, uh huh, we triumph over the enemy. And God did it. They obeyed what the man of God said to do. And God used it for their victory. I want to see something like that, don't you? In our lives. So it's a historical account. It carries a uh, present, comeback, apostolic, chief directive. And here's the directive. Say it with me. I will believe God. For increase, For increase, though it appears in the natural, though it appears in the natural to, be to be impossible, I will pursue, I will pursue corporate, purposes. corporate purposes. I will keep on throwing the ball. I will confront a challenge. I will obey without question. I shout, my blessings are on the way. I'm a comeback kid. I will attract favor. I win and come back. I believe. I pursue. I attract. I obey. I dig ditches. I win. I win. These things are activated in my life, in my circumstances. 2020 is an incredible comeback year. So the definition of comeback, I'll just have one word. Comeback is to recover all. Come back is to recover all. So whatever it is that you've fallen behind in, there's comeback potential. And remember, we're pulling potential out of the unseen realm and pulling it into this manifested, tangible realm. So today, lift your hands again. Every time you lift your hands, I'm activating this thing. Just like your new cell phone is not going to work until you get it activated. So we're going to activate this stuff on the inside of us. I'm going to activate and tap that potential on the inside of you so that it can be brought out of that unseen realm, that place on the inside of you and get it activated in this seen realm. So say with me once again, I believe God. 
I stay in covenant relationship. I do confront every challenge. I do obey without question. I do attract favor. And I win every time. 